sounded very, very close again. Well, to compare that game. Hi there. How are you doing? Wait, wait, don't run away. Stop screaming. I was just joking. Now, there's a reason that you're close today, and the reason is it's another small game that we're playing. Today, we are playing Filler, which is a game about making pastries. The, what you are doing in this game is filling recipes, making cakes, and you are doing that with cards from your hand, so each player is going to get a dealt a hand of cards. Let me show you what cards look like in this game. They have a number of pieces of information, so as long as as well as a nice picture of some cake or other. Below that, it has the ingredients that you require to use to make this recipe. So in this instance, you're going to look at the Battenberg cake, and it, to make it, you need this white ingredient and this blue ingredient. They have names. I'm just not entirely sure what they are. I imagine that the blue is blueberry, but let's not worry about it too much. And on the left hand side, there are three areas for information. So on the top left, we have a time, which we will get to in a short while. On the left panel, in the little blue background, are the ingredients that this card gives you when it is in your hand. So if you are using this card to make other recipes, these are the ingredients that the card gives you. So it's different, it's different ingredients in your hand than it is to make it. And then in the bottom left, there are some Point symbols. So there are three different symbols that might appear in this bottom left space. There is the trophy, like in this one. There is also money, and there are stars. And we'll get to how points are scored at the end. So that's what a card looks like. Also, worth noting that there are some cards that have got special bonus icons on them. So, such as this one, you can see right at the bottom of the card in the middle is a different icon. This is a bonus fill action which I'll cover in a short while. And then this one, at the bottom and middle, has a bonus restock action, which again will make more sense once we've talked about how the game works. So, the way that a game works when you are playing a multiplayer is that each player is dealt a hand of cards, three cards to start with, from the chef, I'm going to be Martha, uh, and we deal out the recipe book for this round. Each player is going to select a card from their hand only for the time and this card then relates to how early they get to work so the earlier the better because whoever gets to work earliest is going to get first chance of fulfilling recipes from the recipe book however when you play a card for the time it is now out of your hand and therefore the ingredients that you've got left to make the recipes are affected by the card that you play for your time so every player will select a card Purely for the time, we'll reveal it all at once. Whoever played the earliest time gets to then take first choice from the recipe book. Whoever was second gets to go second, etc, etc. So to fulfill the recipe, what you then do is play the ingredients that you've got in your hand. And as long as they match or exceed the ingredients that are required to make a recipe, you then take that recipe. So this is some cheating because I haven't made this recipe, but you would then take that recipe and put it into your hand. Then the next player would go, etc, etc. If you fulfill the recipe that's got the bonus fill icon, like this one has, then you fill that recipe by discarding the cards, take this one into your hand, and if you've got more cards in your hand that you can then fulfill another recipe, you do so. Once everybody has had the opportunity to fill a recipe, we refill the recipe book up back to the number that it is, and that depends on how many people are playing in the game. So in a one or two player game, you have three, but in a higher player count, you would have more cards. And then we go again. However, the cards that you've played in the previous round do not come back into your hand. So you're only left with the cards that you haven't yet used. However, you get them back by using the other action, which is when you reveal your time, when you go in, when it's now your turn to fulfill a recipe, instead of filling a recipe, what you're going to do is reserve a recipe and take a recipe card and put it back on top of the deck so that nobody else can fill it this round and doing that allows you to pick up all of the cards that you've got in your discard pile. We keep going until the recipe deck runs out and at the end of the game we count our points and the points like I say are the icons in the bottom left you're going to count up how many icons you've got so just in total 
total number of stars and money and trophies. But then you're going to count up which of those three icons you have the least of. And whatever that number is, you're going to then double that number and add that to your score. So whichever icon you collect the least of is going to be worth three points for you essentially, and the other is going to be worth one. When you play solo, it plays much the same, except that there are each deck of character cards also comes with a rules card for that uh, chef, and each chef behaves slightly differently and scores slightly differently. So in this game, I am playing against Vicky, and her special rule is that um, the money symbols are worth much more to her than the other points, the other point symbols. So every money icon that she collects is going to be worth three points to her, whereas the other ones are only going to be worth one point. So she doesn't get any bonus points. It's essentially like the money point, but the money symbol is always the one that she's got the least of, even if she's got the most of them. So I want to prevent her from collecting money point money symbols. The way that uh, the the bot, the opponent works, is that they've got their starting deck of cards like I would have. I've shuffled it up. When it's time to reveal what time I've selected, I'm just going to flip over the top one of this deck, and that's the time that she's got to work. If I am first, if I am earliest, then I get to fulfill one of these. If Vicky is earliest, then we, she fulfills one, and she fulfills one spe using special rules, and it might be obvious that but her special rule is if there's money symbols out there, she wants them. The other one she's less worried about. So if, if I'm before her in time, I get to pick first. If not, she gets to pick first, and... The difference is that when she fulfills a recipe, it goes into her discard pile rather than into her de into her hand. And then once she goes through this deck uh, and flips over the last card in her deck, and instead of filling a recipe, she's going to restock, which means that she takes her deck, shuffles it back up, and uh, resolve, uh, reserves one of these like I would do if it's relevant. Uh, and then we move on. Okay, so I think we're ready to start. Let me just look at what which of these recipes I want to fill from my hand. I mean, I haven't got good choices. What I'm going to do is play this. Because I know she's not going to take that one. So here we go. So she's picked 650. I've picked 753. In future, I'm probably not going to um, hide my time card because playing against the computer, it doesn't matter what time I pick. So she gets to go first. She gets to pick ones that have the most money icons. And of these with the least with the latest possible time <clears throat> so there are no money icons so she's not worried about anything she's going to take the lightest time which is this one that goes into her discard pile i am spending a white and a chocolate and then two other symbols to fill this recipe and then we move on so my only option is to play that which is 537 vicky's time is 751 so i get to reserve a card i will reserve this one and she gets to take one and it's the latest possible time since so there's no more symbol she takes that one so I've got all these back in my hand now we go here still no money symbols which is good for me I am wanting some points so I'm going to play this one in my time 537 She's got 6.28. I have got chocolate, blueberry, and egg to take this one. And then there's no money symbol, so she just, oh no, she doesn't take any of them because she's got no cards left in her deck. So this would be where she would restock and then reshuffle. But restocking is just going to make this one go back to the top of the deck. So I'm just going to pull it back out and then I'm going to shuffle up her deck. playing that because I can't I've got no choice 551 602 so I get first choice I will reserve this one and then she claims this one and then because I restocks I get all of these back Ooh. that boil of want is worth points so I want to take it so I will go with This card, which is 551, 
He played 628. I'm going to play the a pie, which gives me two ingredients, one of which I'm just going to claim that this wild one is the blueberry. I guess it's this one. And she fills the latest card out here, which is this one. And then from these three, I'd quite like that one, and that works there. So I'm going to go here. 6.52, and Vicky goes 6.50 two minutes earlier than me. How dare she, because she then claims this one, which is what I had my eye on. And I don't have anything that I can claim, so I'm just gonna restock. And I'm just gonna imagine that I put one back on top of the deck, because why would not I not? Now here we go, we've got interesting uh, dilemma here. We've got a card that I definitely want to need to fill, because it's got money symbols on it, but it's also, happily for us, got a free fill and recipe option on it. So I could fill two on this turn if I can make my resources work to do that. Uh, so I need an egg to fill the custard tart. So I can play this one for the egg, let's say. <clears throat> and then I need either white, brown and two others, which could be, for example, here or white, blue, and red. So it could be those two. I could just play two cards. Let's do that. So I'm gonna play this as my time, 551. She's after me. So I play this as a egg, which allows me to play fill this one, which allows me then to bonus fill. And from a bonus fill, I'm gonna play these two to fill this one. And then she gets what's over left, which is here. Oh, now she's going to get some money. Now all the money arrives. Okay, so I don't have... great options in terms of times if I want to fill recipes. Although I could play that one. That makes most sense. So my time is 5.45. Her time is 7.51. She's not actually going to fill a recipe because she's got no cards left in her deck. So I'm going to fill. Am I going to fill or am I going to restock? Interesting choice. She's going to get one of these anyway. I'm potentially, I'm not stopping her for a restock now from getting one. And I'm not going to be able to claim one early next time if I do fill a recipe. So I'm kind of in a no-win situation. So I'll just claim one now. So I'll play this as to claim this one i think yeah because that's best for her i've now filled up my hand with cards that don't have any ingredients on it though she restocks one we'll not worry about it too much and then shuffle up her deck My options are fairly painful. I'm going to go with 923 because that's the earliest of my three cards in the hope that it's of any use. It is not. So she's going to fill the recipe with the most money symbols, which is these two. Out of those two, the one with the latest time is this one. So she's getting lots of points. And I'm just going to res uh, res reserve one of these. Uh, and, but then it just comes straight back out, so we'll not worry about it. What do I want to do now? Stop her from getting that money symbol would be probably a good idea. So that's chocolate, blueberry, and strawberry. Which is those two, if those two cards would do that for me. So then I just need to go earlier than her. So I'll pick my earliest time or just an early time. Let's go risky, 551. 751 is a good choice. There's the three ingredients needed to fill this. She's gonna take the latest one of these two, which is that one. Another money symbol, which I need to take, stop her from taking. I've got the ingredients here, so let us play this one. 5.37, he's got an 8.04. I'm gonna play this card to claim this recipe. She takes the latest of these two. And then this is the last round. Oh, look at that card. Oh, can I do it? 
So this card is pretty good because it's worth five points because it's got all three symbols on it. So that's three points, but then one of these is going to be the three that's your lowest. Therefore, it's going to be worth an extra two points on top. Uh, I will. So I've got I've got the ingredients to do it. If I play this card and this card, or this card and this card, so I'll go with my earliest card out of those combinations. Really, six twenty-six. Fingers crossed. Nope. Five thirty-nine. Vicky gets that, and then I might as well just get that for a point. So that's the end of the game. So now we count our points. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Plus whichever of those is the lowest. So the lowest is stars. I've only got two stars. So that's an extra four points. So I'm up to 16 points. Then we go with Vicky. And remember that money symbols are worth three for her. Everything else is worth one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I win by one point. Huzzah!